came here in 75. Came down here for a drive one day and discovered this grand old building and it was empty. Found out that it was up for tender, so we tendered for it and we won the tender. God knows why we wanted to be miles away from everywhere, but you're just young and you think, oh, you want to go and live in the country. That was the kind of times then too. People wanted to get back to nature and grow their own vegetables. And there was a group of us, it was kind of an art collective. It was at the end of the blurter thing too. My then partner, Robin, had been their photographer. They came and stayed here and lived here for a while. It was just all a bit of fun, really. We didn't think of it as a pub. We just thought of it as a big house. <laughs> but then when Peter came back, it became a pub again. Peter Adar? Mm -hmm. We've known each other about 44 years. West Side Story. <laughs> there was a play in Wamanui. Mm. Uh, that was mm. it. Uh, we were auditioning for West Side Story and, and the Opera House in Wamanui back in 1960-something. Anyway, and I got the part of the big deal. I was in the chorus. <laughs> you were in the chorus. <laughs> I said, mm-hmm, she's mine. <laughs> Our paths continued to cross. But she had another boyfriend. <clears throat> and, you know, I feel like doing the old OE, you know, where I went. So I get back 20 years later. Picked up where we left off. Yeah. Basically, it was weird. And uh, here we still are. I think subconsciously I was always wanting to, to learn to weave. A friend who came to visit here, we were just walking around the garden and because we'd planted a lot of flax, she thought I could weave. And I said, no, I can't weave. And she said, oh, well, I'll teach you. And she did. And that was when I really, I just fell in love with it, weaving. It's just it became a passion. It makes you really proud to be a Māori because it's really a, a unique indigenous craft. It's amazing. You can make mats, rope, clothing. It's a, such a versatile fibre. It's soft and you can weave, weave it raw or you can process it. I just love weaving. It's challenging, it's creative, and I love things that are handmade. And it's fashionable and I love fashion, so. And I love hats and I love making hats. My mum made felt hats and we all grew up having a new hat for Sunday church. Always liked hats anyway, just, you know, those big, beautiful brimmed hats. <laughs> Greta Garbo hats. And, and I love the influence of history on fashion. It can be a fedora, a bowler, a pork pie. And then I make top hats. The top hats have been quite a revolution, really. They take quite a lot of time, but they're great. And people like them, that was a fun thing. Oh, it feels great. When I see people wearing my hats, I love that. So I do kind of get a thrill <laughs> seeing somebody wear something that you make. You think, oh, I made that. It's, it's good to see. I have three daughters and seven grandchildren, and one on the way. And they're interspersed between France, Japan, and Australia. But we've got an announcement to make. We're getting married next year, so hopefully they'll all come back at the same time. And I'll and be so. really happy. Mm. It's New Year's resolution. <laughs> we might not just do it, you know, officially. And good excuse to good use excuse the church to and have, have a party. party. <laughs> 40 years. It's probably time. I like it because I've been here forever. I feel at home and comfortable and I've got all my materials around me to do the work I like to do. And that's a wonderful thing.